Hello everyone, welcome back to City Skylines, to the city of Aurelia. We are back with the airport because I would like to expand it and build a cargo terminal. Some place where cargo is just going to be transferred between planes, uh, trains and uh, trucks, of course. So uh, this place is definitely going to be one of the crazier projects in the city. Uh, Aurelia has seen some crazy projects in the past and this one is definitely going to be one of them. So. Cargo terminals in, in real-life airports or on real-life airports are not all that super special. It's just usually warehouses or hangars and uh, the, the plane is just going to park in front of them and the cargo is just going to be loaded, unloaded. It's not all that super interesting and not something that I would like to do in, uh, in the city of Aurelia in this airport. So I decided to do something something different and design uh, something uh, that I've uh, I've never really seen on any airport, obviously, because it's a completely made up project. But hopefully, it's going to turn out looking looking nice, and you guys are going to like it as well. So, what exactly is it going to be? You can see that I already started with uh, some geometry. Let's say I started with uh, positioning some of these rulers in this uh, like a like a flower pattern, let's say, and. Uh, that's because I wanted to have uh, very specific uh, degrees or very specific angles between these these uh, these lines of rulers. So at first I wanted to have uh, like a 30 degree angle. You could have seen me actually do that using the roads because uh, Move It mod only lets you rotate things by 45 degrees. But uh, I built uh, two roads that had exactly 30 degrees between them so that I could uh, then align uh, one one cross of the rulers, uh, you know, according to those roads, and get those uh, 30 degrees, and then I can obviously rotate it again to get uh, you know more more uh, more multiples. Let's say now this allowed me to create uh, this pattern where I'm going to create uh, well first I created the border with the circle, and then I'm going to do these uh, I'm not sure how to really call them well just this shape that you can see me do right here. By the way, I should probably mention that this episode, you already noticed, is uh, is going to be a bit more standard one when I'm just going to have uh, the, the time lapse uh, in front of me and I'm just going to comment what exactly is going on. So it's more of a more of the standard uh, format uh, that you have you have been used to and uh, it's probably the best to keep it this way. Anyway, what's going on? So as you can see, I ended up uh, having this this is like a, again, like a flower pattern, something like that, a sunflower pattern, maybe not. And uh, it's really difficult to explain how exactly it's going to work at this point, but uh, it's going to be super obvious later when I'm going to start uh, doing some more detailing and positioning the planes. I actually already positioned the planes where they would be uh, after this is all finished because I wanted to have some sort of measures or I wanted to get the idea how big these places uh, need to be. Let's call them plane stands, I guess. These uh, little uh, cuts into into the into the wheel. Actually, yeah, it actually looks like a like a wheel with teeth, right? And uh, these teeth are going to be places where where planes are going to be parked. So uh, I'm not sure right now how many there are, but there's there's quite a few places for the for the planes to park. And uh, the place that's going to be uh, in the middle is going to go around these planes. Uh, obviously, as you can see by the Boeing plane, the plane stand is not that big so that the entire plane is going to go over it, but uh, it's just so that the planes can just go closer to the center of the circle, let's say. Uh, again, it's kind of difficult to explain it right now with only using words, but uh, you, will, you will see how exactly this needs to be. So as you can see, I uh, just created the basic shape and uh, copy it, I copy pasted it to the airport already, uh, aligned it to that uh, already aligned or angled uh, runway, and uh, already tried to measure the necessary like distances if uh, if there would be a taxiway with the largest plane, if the wingspan is just going to be you know uh, you know it's, it's just going to be fine and the planes will be able to go around it. And uh, that was pretty quick. Uh, I, I actually really like that I started doing this right away and uh, I'm not going to have to worry about positioning the taxiways later. So 
I already did uh, some detailing with the taxiways, as you can see here. I'm using the procedural object to mark the, the radii for the, for the shoulders, for all the intersections and all that. So this was kind of, uh, you know, like a boring work, I guess. I didn't really want to do it, but obviously the airport needs it. Uh, this time I didn't really bother doing all the markings for the intersections. Uh, to be honest, uh, I'm, I was just fed up with that because uh, it uh, involved all the all the network uh, lines that are terrain conforming, like I explained with the airport video, and I just didn't really have the patience this time. So uh, the intersections are just going to stay like they are, like this, uh, mostly without the lines, but honestly, it's not really taking anything away from the project we are going to do today, because obviously taxiways are not the main focus. I'm not really even showing absolutely everything in here, just uh, just some uh, just some small bits. By the way, the shoulders in this shot, uh, in this time lapse, are black, and that is only because uh, the mod that is responsible for recoloring all the highways, all the roads in Aurelia black as well. Uh, that mod was causing the shoulders as well to to make them black. So uh, at this point, I had it activated. Um, even the even the new CSUR loader mod, which is which is recoloring the roads, is doing this. So. In some shots, there's going to be green, uh, green shoulders, just like with the airport video. You saw that. In some shots, it's going to be black. So you know, don't be confused. It's a, it's the same network. It's just uh, sometimes I'm having that coloring mode enabled. All right. So now I can finally continue explaining how exactly is this place going to work because now I think it's going to become uh, much more, much more clear or clearer, right? So this place is going to be sunken. We can see that right now. I placed uh, I placed railroads right uh, through the center of this place. That's why I left uh, some of the teeth, uh, you know, where the railroads are going to go. And this place uh, is going to be actually on three levels. At first, I wanted to only do two levels, but uh, it was kind of obvious that uh, we need to do three levels. Basically, one level for every mode of transportation. Well, actually not, because the lowest level is going to serve both uh, trucks and trains. And the middle level is basically going to be like a inter layer where the cargo is just going to be sorted and all that. It's it's probably jumping ahead a bit too much at this point. So you will all see that. All right, so this was a pretty straightforward, uh, straightforward creation of, of the basis of this place. I just placed the tracks, like I said, through the middle. Uh, placed four of them because why not? Uh, you know, the more the better. And uh, then some roads uh, on the on the middle layer in here. These roads are not exactly going to be used. They are only here to mark the basic geometry of the level and kind of set the height and all that, just so I can get a better idea how this place is going to be looking like. Because I only had the basic idea of uh, of this design, but obviously as I went forward, I was uh, making stuff up. So that's exactly these kinds of walls that I'm putting in here. I'm just trying out different things, obviously not showing absolutely everything in the time lapse. So on the surface of the lowest level, there's that uh, prop. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called. I think it's some sort of a like a concrete. It kind of does look like uh, iron or steel or something, but I think it's called concrete uh, floor or something. I'm not exactly sure, but it's looking nice. I think I used this one before with the with the dam or the industrial zone. So that's, uh, that's quite a long time ago. But uh, I really like the texture and it's uh, definitely a different color or different tone compared to the, to the pavement that I'm doing on the second level and uh, to asphalt, which is going to be on the top level. So it's just a different color, which is definitely something that this place needs. Also, I made this place uh, somewhat sym symmetrical. I'm not sure what it's called in English uh, when you have symmetry, but uh, not along like an axis, but along a point. I'm not actually sure if that's even the case here, but whatever. The point is that uh, this uh, lowest level is not going to be absolutely everywhere around uh, this this uh, sunflower pattern, whatever. Uh, it's just not going to be absolutely everywhere. It's going to be mostly concentrated uh, towards the center. And uh, there's going to be these, um, these like bays, let's call them, around the tracks where some of the cargo containers that you will see soon are going to be positioned or stored. Now, this place, as you can see right here with this shot, that's actually a very good timing with the time lapse, uh, has uh, some of these bays uh, uh, just not 
everywhere uh, in in the in the surrounding area. I'm not sure how to explain it. You probably see what you see, so not no point in really explaining that uh, further. All right, so let's continue. Now that's pretty much the main shape finished. By the way, in these shots, you can see, especially when I zoom in, some of these, uh, some of the concrete props, so the surface props are disappearing. But later I converted all of them into procedural objects and the disappearing actually stopped. So that's only in the time lapse, but in the cinematics, it should be completely gone. Anyway, I continued uh, with these uh, cranes. I obviously converted them into procedural objects so I can manipulate them better. And I made them uh, a lot bigger. Obviously, that's already slightly unrealistic because they probably wouldn't be able to uh, hold uh, that much load because they have a very high span right now but I don't suppose that the containers or just cargo that's going to be transferred in this place is going to be like super heavy because it's going to be loaded onto planes after all and uh, you know Aurelia is in the future so whatever and uh, I just liked the design of those cranes uh, in the in the middle I obviously positioned uh, more than just one uh, over uh, over the the bottom base. I just position them so that they kind of overlap and uh, they also connect uh, to each other. So basically there's like three rows of these cranes and all the individual cranes or all the individual beams, I'm not sure how they're called, could uh, probably travel from one end of the row to the other. So they could uh, theoretically like meet and move together or whatever. Uh, it's obviously just going to increase capacity if those beams are uh, not alone on the on the rails, but uh, it's just looking nice. It's just looking like uh, it's uh, it's busier. The place is busier. So I quickly I quickly finished the top layer, and as you can see, it's uh, it's nice and black with the asphalt. It's actually forming a very nice contrast. I intentionally didn't want to create any different color on the top level. And I'm definitely not going to put any kinds of uh, stains or dirt or anything like that on the top layer because I really like the contrast like it is now. This is going to be, by the way, I built some sort of a control tower there really, really quickly. It's not really a control tower for the, uh, for the airport itself, I guess, because we already have that with the main terminal. But I would imagine that this is more like the observer tower or overseer tower or something like that for controlling the the stuff that's happening in the pit let's say inside uh, the cargo terminal because uh, there are going to be some autonomous vehicles that i'm going to add later and maybe this tower is just controlling them but uh, again it's just a nice uh, thing to have here and i really like how it breaks the symmetry of this entire place again i already broke it using that uh, this is the design of the bottom level and the tower just uh, you know adds to it nicely now, uh, this is uh, something that uh, I was not exactly sure if I'm going to do or not. But by the way, I should probably talk about those orange things that I did there. So this is probably a good time to finally talk about how this airport is going to work. Or sorry, how this cargo terminal is going to work. So basic idea is that uh, you have the planes coming to the top level, of course. They are going to advance to those, uh, those teeth. And uh, there you have those orange platforms that I quickly built earlier, right? And uh, those are going to be just uh, traveling from the top level to the bottom level. And there are going to be those autonomous vehicles that are going to pick up the cargo on the, on the middle level, on the pavement level. And then they are going to go on the platforms, the orange platforms, which is uh, going to raise them towards the planes, right? So... At first I built, uh, you could have probably seen that I built like a different design of these platforms, but then I copy pasted a slightly smaller version to the rest of this area. And that's because the first uh, design was very big and uh, it was at that point when I realized that this entire place is uh, like seriously overscaled, uh, you know, to, to, to what it needs to be basically, because it's an it's a airplane cargo terminal after all so planes obviously cannot take all that much cargo compared to i don't know ships or trains obviously so uh, i didn't really want to re redo this or just scale it down so i tried to maybe come up with uh, some overscaling of the planes as well right so that's why i did that uh, abomination let's call it uh, those uh, double planes right there 
Uh, I was kind of inspired though by a real life design. I'm not sure what's the name, something like a Strato launcher. I think it's a plane. I'm not sure who made it, but I'm not even sure if it exists. Maybe it's just a concept. It's basically looking similar and it's intended to uh, take some sort of a, like a like a rocket, you know, space rocket in, in between the, the hull and it's going to launch it from the stratosphere, right? It's not really going to be like a, like a SSTO, like a single stage two orbit plane, but uh, it's mostly intended for, uh, like I said, for launching stuff from the, from the upper layers of atmosphere. But this, this thing that I did in Aurelia, it, uh, it might be just like a super heavy cargo plane, but uh, you know, I just did it because I could. That's the only reasoning that I really need for any kind of projects in Aurelia. So, so why not do it? And I think it actually turned out looking looking good. There are no visible seams, let's say, uh, when it comes to the connections with the procedural objects and all that. So it actually looks all right. It actually looks all right. And obviously I had to do it with the biggest plane in the workshop. So now let's go to the autonomous vehicles and to the to the to the vehicles that are going to be moving on the second level or transporting cargo from the planes or actually from this place to the to the planes so i was inspired i'm not sure uh, who is the manufacturer but i saw a picture of like a like a new autonomous uh, uh, truck let's say it's not really a truck and it basically looked like a container on wheels right nothing more it was just a completely autonomous electric uh, I'm not even sure if I should call it a truck, a delivery system, maybe. And uh, this is basically going to be exactly it. Now, these two, these two guys there, those are, those are actual working autonomous vehicles that I already uh, used in Aurelia uh, some time ago. And uh, they also come with, uh, with a prop version, so I could obviously use that with procedural objects and do something with it. At first, I only took, uh, I only took like a regular. Uh, a container trailer for just normal trucks and I put uh, this guy uh, in front of it as uh, as the engine basically but then it occurred to me why not just uh, do this design like uh, symmetrical so that it can go just back and forth and uh, I come up with this I came up with this so it's also having some sort of a like a prop for uh, for containers smaller containers and I obviously just had to cut it cut off the wheels from the uh, from the trailer and uh, make it look like a platform for the containers and uh, connect it to the to the little guys uh, be beneath that so it's looking it's looking rather cute uh, I really like this design of some sort of a autonomous uh, cargo handler let's say and it's only intended really to work on the on the airport on this second level I'm thinking that maybe the second level is not really seeing any humans maybe the second level is just completely intended for autonomous vehicles and humans are only allowed to really be on the on the lowest level uh, maybe just uh, you know where the cargo is just going to be transferred from trucks I suppose that uh, in this uh, in the city people are still driving trucks or they you know if they choose not to then I guess it is possible to also make them autonomous but uh, that's not the point the second level in here I, I think that is only reserved for those kinds of uh, autonomous vehicles and the top level I guess as well um, so that's that's the general idea of this place that's why I didn't really want to overdo it too much with uh, some sort of lines and detailing like that because the autonomous vehicles don't really need that and uh, it's all going to be controlled from that observation tower where some human controllers are probably just going to be uh, sitting and not really doing anything, I would imagine, but just uh, making sure that everything works as it needs to. And if there's some issues, then they can obviously uh, solve it because they are right there and they can see they can see what's going on. Right. So while I was explaining that, I pretty much finished all the detailing when it comes to the cargo. So. On the bottom level, there are containers. Now, you might argue that containers are obviously not exactly all that fitting for a cargo airport because they cannot be loaded onto the planes. Um, they can be uh, loaded into the biggest planes. Uh, they can be definitely loaded into the Antonov plane and uh, even that abomination plane that I built. Uh, I've seen pictures now. They are loading uh, just ordinary shipping containers into, into the plane. So... That's fine, but uh, most importantly, I'm thinking that uh, the places between the plane stands, between the teeth, 
you could have already seen me uh, cover them, the edges, cover them with some, some sort of walls. And I'm actually adding some doors right now. And uh, these places underneath are probably going to be intended for pre preparing the actual uh, plain uh, containers, which are located, that's the white containers, which are located on this uh, second level. So cargo might arrive um, in a container, either on a train or a truck to the bottom level. It's going to be transported to the uh, middle level, where it's just going to be transported into these uh, warehouses, preparation warehouses, let's call them, where it's going to be prepared for the uh, airplane uh, airplane uh, uh, travel, right? So uh, that's, uh, that's the reasoning. Again, is it realistic? Absolutely not. Uh, would this work in real life? I don't know, probably not, but that's obviously not stopping me from building it in the game. So I'm doing mostly the final detailing, as you can see here, just uh, putting some cargo behind these windows. So it's just going to look nice. Positioning the planes, positioning some of the autonomous vehicles on the ramps, making sure that some of the ramps are lowered. Some of them are like halfway, uh, halfway uh, up and uh, just making sure that the place is going to look like it uh, it might actually have a purpose right it's obviously not going to be functional because uh, well it's kind of impossible to make this crazy design functional so that even these uh, smaller vehicles could just move everywhere later i'm not sure if i'm oh yeah i am showing it in the cinematic uh, sorry in the time lapse i am going to rework this uh, bottom level i'm going to make uh, actual functional roads go parallel to the tracks and there's going to be some trucks uh, just uh, going on these on these invisible roads on the bottom level and it's just going to add uh, some uh, some uh, some liveness let's say to the to the entire thing right so making sure that uh, the the cargo cranes are not going to be in the way of these roads and that's pretty much the last thing that I'm going to do here so that was the cargo cargo terminal project I think it turned out looking really great like I said it's one of the craziest uh, one of the crazier projects uh, in Aurelia but uh, you know why not that's definitely not a bad thing okay guys so there's only going to be the cinematics left I thank you for watching today's episode of Aurelia I'm not sure when the next episode is going to be I also started playing Altengrad but just just lightly so uh, some videos from there are uh, not exactly going to happen anytime soon, but, uh, you know, who knows? Who knows? Maybe, maybe some things might. But anyway, that's all for today's episode, guys. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed today's episode, then you can always leave a comment, leave a like, share the video if you want to. And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel to see more of these videos. Take care, guys, and I'll see you next time.